What's going on today, everybody? It's Buddy here. And in this video, you guys are going to learn how to place your radiator in your BMW E90, E91, E92, and E93. This video is going to go over the entire process from how to drop the old coolant out of your car, uninstall the old radiator, reinstall the new radiator, and bleed all the air out of your cooling system. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the car on a lift or on some ramps to get the front wheels off of the ground. So now we got the front of the car off the ground, it's time to go right here under the front bumper. And we're going to go ahead and remove this middle skid plate. Now you don't need to take the whole skid plate off, just this middle section, you can see there is a seam right here. You just need to take the middle off, you do not need to take the entire skid plate off from each side of the bumper. And there's also some screws off here to the side, so you want to make sure that you look for those before you start ripping at the skid plate. And at this point, you should be able to move your skid plate right off. It should not take any force. So if there is any force needed, it's probably because you have a couple of screws you missed. So double check for that. And now that we got our skid plate taken off, we're going to pop under the vehicle and we're going to locate the drain plug for our radiator. And how you find that is you find a blue screw right here on the left side of the radiator. So we're going to go ahead and slide our catch pan in place. And what I'm using here is just a pair of locking pliers with a quarter locked inside of them. Now this thing strips super easily, so do not try and use a flathead. Take a quarter or a dime, get it in there with some locking pliers, because if you strip this thing, then you're going to have to pull your radiator with all the liquid inside of it. It's going to make a huge mess, so be very careful in this step and take your time. And at this point, you just want your radiator to drain out completely before moving on to the next step. And as you can see here, mine is just straight water. That's why it's clear. Yours should be blue because BMW antifreeze is blue. And be sure to remove your coolant reservoir's tank cap so you can drain the system out quicker. So now that we got all the coolant out of the system, it's time to start taking stuff apart inside the engine bay. So the first thing I like to do is create some room here in the engine bay. So we're going to move this little intake box and our air filter box. So we got two little T20 screws we're going to remove here, one here on the right side, and then one here on the left side. Now once we got these two screws removed, we're going to go ahead and detach it from our air intake box and just pull it right out. Now we're going to start here on our air filter box, and what's holding this in is just two little 10 millimeter bolts. We're going to go ahead and pull these out. Now moving right over here to the left, we're going to have an airflow sensor and we're going to have a hose clamp. So we're going to go ahead and loosen up this hose clamp with a flathead screwdriver. And then with this airflow sensor, we're going to take a pick. We're going to go right under this little notch and pull it straight out. And after we got our two 10 millimeter bolts removed, our airflow sensor and the hose clamp, we should be able to pull this air box right out. Then go ahead and get a rag and stuff it in your intake hose so you don't get anything inside your engine. And then we're going to have this little electrical connector here that hooks up to our fan. So we're going to push this in on both sides and yank it out. Now coming in right here on the left side of the radiator, we're going to have a T25 screw right here. And I will put a link in the description for these T-bits. If you do want to do DI work on your BMW, you're definitely going to need a set of these. Now coming back under the car, we're going to remove this T25 screw here holding up this cooler. And since we're down here, let's go ahead and remove this little bottom coolant hose as well. Now coming over here under the upper radiator hose, we're going to have one last thing holding the fan in place, and that's this little clip. We're just going to get a finger under here, pull it out, and then pull the cooling fan up while we're lifting up that little tab. Now after we got the fan removed, we're going to come to the passenger side of the radiator, and we're going to pull this little retaining bar out with our pick. Now after we got this bar out, we should be able to just pull this straight out. Now they are really tight in there, you may need to use a screwdriver, or you just have to wiggle it out until it pulls out. And also be sure to have a catch pan under your car so you don't get coolant all over the place. And what I like to do is take my shot back and suck all the coolant out of the radiator and suck all the coolant out of the engine as well. And then it's going to be the exact same process here with this little coolant hose under the lower radiator hose on the passenger side of the radiator. And on the driver's side of the radiator, we're going to remove the coolant hose that we took the screw out of earlier. And 
And then last but not least, we're gonna have our upper radiator hose. Same thing, pull this retention pin out. And we're gonna go ahead and wiggle this out. So we just went ahead and snapped the radiator. I used JB Weld to kind of cover up a little crack that was already in there. That's the main reason we're replacing this. So no big deal. As long as our coupling here is good, we're good to go. Then we're gonna have a T25 screw in the top right corner of our radiator we're gonna remove. And then we're going to have one last screw holding our radiator in by the upper radiator hose in the top left corner of our radiator. And at this point, you'll be able to remove your radiator right out of your vehicle. Now that we've got the radiator out, it's a good time to check all your little gaskets here to make sure none are not dry rotted or cracked. Your radiator should have came with extra gaskets, so be sure to verify all that before you place in the new one. And since your engine bay is nice and open right now, it's a good time to clean up any gunk that's built up on your engine. I use this super clean brand. works really good. And also, be sure to verify what radiator plug you're going to be using by pulling the old one out of your old radiator. Now at this point, we can go ahead and slap in our new radiator. And then we'll go ahead and screw in the two screws at both corners of the radiator to hold it in place. And then we'll go ahead and pop in this bottom coolant hose. And then we're going to go ahead and attach our other bottom coolant hose. And then we're going to attach our lower radiator hose. And last but not least, we're going to attach our upper radiator hose and snap in our retaining bar. Now that our radiator is in place, we can go ahead and put our fan back in. And secure the screw in the top right corner of the radiator fan. And don't forget to go under your car and secure your cooler to your fan box. Let's reattach our electrical connector back to our fan. And then reattach our final coolant line. And then finally, we're going to reinstall our air filter box back in our engine bay. So now we got the engine bay all taken care of. It's time to fill our coolant system up with some antifreeze coolant. You want to get BMW rated antifreeze coolant because the coolant system in these cars are pretty sensitive. And you also want to use distilled water. You don't want to use water with minerals in it. Distilled water is just pure water. And that way you won't mess up your cooling system. So you do want to make sure you do use a 50-50 ratio of distilled water to antifreeze coolant. And our coolant system here in this N52 motor does take two gallons. We have one gallon of antifreeze and we have one gallon of distilled water. So we're going to go ahead and pour both of those in the engine. So you can see our reservoir here is completely full. We still got about a half a gallon of coolant to put in. So we take a quarter with some locking pliers and we twist this little bleeder screw here. So we'll keep doing that until we get as much coolant as we can inside of the system. And after we got as much as we can in there, we're going to go ahead and put our cap back on. We're going to leave our bleeder screw open a little bit. And now we're going to go bleed the system of all the air to make sure we get all the air out of the system. So now we're going to bleed all the air out of the system by activating our electric water pump. So we're going to put the key in the ignition. We're not going to put our foot on the brake. We're going to just press the button. And then we're going to take our AC module and we're going to keep it on the lowest setting. We're going to turn the heat all the way up. And then we're going to step on the gas for about 10 seconds. And I'm sure you guys heard that little gargle there. That is our electric water pump working and that's going to bleed our system. And you should be hearing this noise in your engine bay. So we're going to let that water pump run for about 15 minutes and we're done. But wait. First, if you enjoyed this instructional video, I'm going to have to ask you to press the subscribe button and the thumbs up button. But also really quick guys, I just want to show you a quick preview of this video I made on buying and selling a BMW E90 and making a few thousand dollars on it. As many of my subscribers know, if you're one of them, I do flip cars for a living full time. I have entire videos on the complete processes that I use on how I make thousands of dollars every month flipping cars. And here's a real short preview of the video. What is going on today, everybody? It's Buddy here. Today, I'm going to show you guys how I took this super ugly, neglected, beat up looking BMW and turned it into thousands of dollars of profit. So I'm mainly a DIY channel, but I have started a segment on how to flip cars. It's what I do for a living full time. So if you want to learn how to get potentially profitable vehicles at low prices, how to fix them up and flip them, make a whole lot of money on the back end, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. I'm going to show you guys the entire process of how I made a few thousand dollars off this BMW from how much I knew I should buy it for, how much I knew I could sell it for, how much money I had to put into it, and ultimately how much profit I made off this. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video.